All right, thank you so much, Catherine. Well, joining us now is the president of FedEx Express Canada, Lisa Listen. Lisa, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm really happy you're here. You know, listen, uh, you host a TV show, you get a lot of books sent to you. It's just the course of the day, you're, the course of the week, you're going to get some books. And, you know, sometimes you're like, okay, let's take a look at this book. I started reading your book, and you know how to write, first oh. off. Uh, so you, this, this book, you start reading it, you sort of get into the story very quickly. Uh, your story is a tremendous one, uh, personally, business-wise. Uh, why don't you tell us, the viewer at home, why, why you wrote this book? Well, first of all, I wrote the book for to help others, first of all. I mean, my husband, you know, had a heart attack when my kids were 9, 7, 5, and 3 in the middle of the night. High school sweetheart, met him when I was 14, kept him alive in a coma for two years trying to find and hope for a miracle. And at the end of that, I did not get that. And now my kids are much older. It'll be 11 years this August since he passed away. My kids are asking questions. And how do I explain all these years with my high school sweetheart? So I did it for my children. I also did it to help others because I suffered a devastating loss. I found my resilience. And resilience is defined as getting through something, a traumatic life experience, stronger than when you started. I wanted to share how I could find resilience, which I learned, by the way, you don't need to be born with it. Resilience is something that you can learn. And I did it to help others to find the light in the darkest of times. One of the things you do in this book, you paint this picture. You had a, you had a perfect life. You we know? sure did, the, Sort yeah. of the, the cottage and the kids and the career, everything's working. And then you end up in a, in a dark place for obvious reasons. So how did you get out of it? Yeah, so it's a, it's a really great question. I mean, it's very hard, but I got out of it for a couple of reasons. Number one, I was saying to myself when he, when he had his heart attack and then he passed away when I lost all hope, I was saying to myself, I'm not going to get through this. I won't survive. Then I realized the most important conversation we have in life is with ourselves. I was telling myself I wasn't going to get through this. I was quitting before I even started trying. So I started paying attention to my inner voice saying, I will be okay. I didn't know what okay meant. I will be okay. The second thing I started doing is living with gratitude. I started realizing that Patrick could have had his heart attack when he was driving me. Patrick could have been driving my kids. So in the darkest of times, if we look hard enough, we can find a reason to smile. So I started living with gratitude, realizing that what's the silver lining in this? I was blessed with four children. The other thing I learned as well, too, about this is that for some reason, our minds tend to worry. Worrying is like just wasted energy. Mm -hmm. So I started realizing I had to live in the moment and be grateful for what I have and not focus on what's missing. And one of the things I've heard you say is, you know, let it go. Indeed. Let it go. Indeed, because the thing in life is that when things happen to us, we have to look and say, can I control or influence this? If the answer is yes, do it. If the answer is no, we have to learn to let it go. I always tell my kids this. My three favorite words after I love you are let it go and move on. We can't go back because we're not going that way. Let's talk a bit about your kids. You know, Mother's Day, obviously, right around the corner. Your mother of four children. Uh, how important was, you know, in writing this and your career, how, is it, how important has been that connection with your children and, and your relationship with your children? Oh, it's been amazing. You know what? My kids are, they're, they're learning resilience. They have their own resilience, they, they, They're right? learning it, too, yeah. because they, they, they haven't had a dad for 11 years. I'm the mom and the dad. So I'm teaching all the things that I've learned about resilience, and I'm passing it down to them about gratitude, about living in the moment, about letting go, about paying attention to your thoughts and your inner voice. And, and believing that you will be successful in life no matter what. Believe, believing in yourself is the key thing behind every successful endeavor you do. Well, clearly, you've believed in yourself uh, in your business career. 26 years at FedEx. Yes, yeah. Uh, well, your first job at FedEx was? Entry-level marketing. And you've made it to president <laughs> yeah. of the company. Tell us about that path at FedEx. Well, it's been a wonderful journey, um, and it's been, I, you know, I really love FedEx for the culture. They always say this, culture will eat your strategy for breakfast. So it's so important where you go to work that it's a very good culture. FedEx has an amazing culture. They've been so great to me. I mean, what company gives a widow, 40 years old, four young kids, the top job? I mean, I am so grateful for them. Is there something about culture? Do, do other companies need to learn on that, on that point, culture? Because you went through the ranks of FedEx. I know you've said that you didn't, you weren't a victim of sexual harassment in a 26 year career I was not. in the corporate world. That is, you know, shocking to, to many people. Is it because FedEx did the right thing when it came to culture? Absolutely. Right thing about culture, about diversity, about anti-harassment. They've got amazing policies in place. And that's why so many people at FedEx had such a long tenure. Uh, I'm a big business guy, so I got to ask some business questions. Sure, sure. Uh, do you like live, breathe, eat shipping? Do you love the idea of getting something from point A to point B, or are you just a businesswoman that could sell anything? 
I love FedEx, and I love big, making people small. If you think about this, we ship everything. We ship wedding rings. We ship heart transplants. Like, we can change people's lives, and that gives me such joy. What do you think, if you look at the current state, the current market, you've got a lot of competitors from, from the Canada Post and the UPSs and that kind of stuff, and we hear Amazon wants to get into this kind of business, too. As you see the market, what are your challenges at FedEx? Well, I think the biggest challenge is the growth of e-commerce. It's growing like crazy and trying to keep up with that and the changing demands of the consumers, right? Consumers want it now. They want it fast. They want it easy. They want convenience. And just trying to keep up with the, the rate of change is probably our biggest challenge. Anything that FedEx has to improve on? I would say right now is just to make sure we continue to do a great job for our customers and make sure we stay in touch with our customers and their changing needs. Uh, Lisa, listen, I recommend everyone who's watching us go get this book. It is, it's really a stellar piece thank of work. You. You're a great writer. And thank you for joining us. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you so much. Lisa, listen, from FedEx Express Canada. We'll be back right here on BT.